Hello, my name is Michael Watson. I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the entire Ableton Live manual from start to finish. Today we're doing chapter 13, which is launching clips. This chapter is going to be broken up into two parts. Right now I'm going to be talking about these launch options in here. And then in the next video, I'm going to be focusing on follow actions. So I'm going to jump right in. To get to your clip view, go to your clip and double click and you should get this box over here. If it looks a bit weird over here, say it like this, that's fine. That just means you double clicked a MIDI clip. The settings are the same, but I've just got some audio clips queued up. So I'm going to be working with audio files. So if you don't see this launch box over here, go to your little clip box over here and click this L. See if it's unclicked, that's what it looks like. And if it's highlighted, you see this little launch box. Okay, and I'll be talking about these four launch modes to start. So first of all, let's talk about trigger mode. So if your clip is in trigger mode and you trigger the clip, it's gonna just keep playing it through until you stop it. So as you can see, it's gonna repeat. The only way to stop it, I'm gonna have to hit one of these stop buttons, either in the same track, so one of these, or this one over here, or this master stop button. So that's pretty simple. Let's go to gate. So in gate mode, if you trigger a clip, it's only gonna play while you're holding your mouse down or holding the key down that triggered this clip. If you're using a MIDI keyboard, you might not be using a mouse. I'm using a mouse right now. So as soon as I let go, it's gonna stop. So if you've tried this and it didn't stop immediately, chances are your quantization settings are different to mine. And the way that this decides when to stop is that it stops at the next possible opportunity according to your quantization settings. So if my settings here show one bar and I launch this clip, then it's gonna finish the full bar before it stops. So I've stopped hitting it, but it only stopped once it finished this bar. But if it's something really small, like a 30 seconds, I'm holding it and I let go and it stops immediately. So take that into account. All right, let's go to toggle mode. So toggle mode is very similar to trigger mode in that when you trigger a clip, it's gonna keep looping. The difference is this time it's going to keep looping until you click it again. Right, so you click the same clip to stop it. Whereas in trigger mode, clicking the same clip again is just going to start the clip again. It's not actually going to stop the clip. So that is the difference between the two. Okay, let's go to repeat. So repeat is pretty cool. You can click it once to start a clip like most of the other settings. But if I hold it down, it's going to repeat the beginning section according to my quantization settings. So my quantization settings were 30 seconds, but if I do something like a quarter note, you see the difference there. So let's talk about this quantization here. This clip launch quantization chooser lets you adjust an onset timing correction for clip triggering. If you don't want any of this quantization correction, it's fine, you can just toggle to none. But I'm going to explain to you what this quantization does. So basically, when you launch a clip and then you launch another one, you can set the time it takes for the next clip to trigger. And that is typically set, as you can see by your default, to be your global quantization setting, which is the setting at the top left here. But if you want the quantization setting to specifically be different to this one, or to always be set no matter what your global quantization setting is, then you can actually set it here in your launch box. How this quantization setting works is that this number here is applied to this specific clip when this clip is launched. So if I am going to this clip, let's set it back to a quarter. So when I'm going to this clip, which is set to a quarter, however, this clip is set to half. If I trigger the second clip here from the first clip, it's not going to quantize on the quarter note. It's actually going to quantize on this half note because that's this clip setting and it's when this clip gets launched. We're talking about the launch box. So just understand that distinction. It's really tempting to think that when I'm on this clip, then the clip's gonna change on the quarter beat. That's only gonna change on the quarter beat depending on the setting of the clip that is going to be launched, not the clip that is currently playing. So it's a really important distinction. Okay, let's talk about this velocity box. So this velocity amount control allows you to adjust the effective MIDI note velocity on the clip's volume. If this is set to zero, there's no influence and at 100% the softest notes play the clip silently. Now I can't demonstrate this because I don't have a MIDI controller here, but this has to do 
with your MIDI controller. So if you are launching a clip via, say, Ableton Live Push, and you're hitting the launch button hard, and this velocity is set to 100, then the volume of the clip you're launching is also going to be louder. But if this velocity is set to 100 and you're hitting the clip really softly, then that's going to affect the volume of the clip that you're triggering as well. If this velocity is set to zero, which is the default, then it doesn't matter how hard you hit the trigger for your clip, it's going to play at the volume that you've set it to i.e. the volume that you've got here in the track fader and the inherent velocity. So this velocity over here has nothing to do with your MIDI note velocity here. It has to do with whether or not Ableton Live reads into how hard you're hitting your MIDI controller or not. And also want to talk about legato mode here. This box over here is your legato mode switch. As all the other switches, if it goes into a color, then it's active. And if it's grayed out like the rest of Ableton Live, then it's not active. So how this works. Suppose you've gathered in one track a number of looping clips and you now want to toggle among them without losing sync. So you want to start with the one and then continue with the other. For this, you can use large quantization settings of like a bar or more, but this might limit your musical expression. And that's where this legato comes in especially when quantization is turned off. So let's show you how this works. When a clip in legato mode is launched, let's make sure I'm in the right clip over here, get all these things correct. Then when I launch this clip, seeing that it's in legato mode, it'll take over the play position from whatever clip was played before this. So I'm, I'm gonna count, actually let's do the metronome. Two, three, four. You can see it literally started like right where I stopped without taking into consideration any quantization. It's not going to do that with this clip because this clip doesn't have legato mode turned on. Now one note of warning. If you're using a lot of legato mode and you're changing between a lot of clips, you might hear dropouts in the audio. And this is happening because you're unexpectedly jumping to a point in the sample that live has had no chance to preload from the disk in advance. If this is happening, you can load your clip into RAM mode by going into your clip sample. If you can't see this, go to your clip box and click this little waveform over here to open your sample dialog box and you can have it in RAM mode. And what this does is it makes sure that the clip is loaded in RAM and it's reading it from RAM. So it's kind of always waiting to be launched. You won't hear audio dropouts, but RAM is a limited resource on your computer or typically on people's computers. It's a limited resource. And so you want to use this sparingly. Don't just put all your clips in RAM mode. Really only use it if you have to. And you know that you're going to access it quickly, unexpectedly over and over again. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about all these different follow actions. This is really, really important, especially if you're performing live. So I urge you to watch the video. I will link you to it right now. As always, if you have any questions or comments or want to get in contact with me, please do so. I love to hear from you and I really appreciate all the positive feedback you guys have given me. And remember to have fun.